Microsoft has a tool that allows you to create custom generative AI chatbots or co-pilots. And this tool is Microsoft Copilot Studio. Copilots are just AI powered productivity tools that you can create within Copilot Studio to do all sorts of different custom actions or gather all sorts of information that you need. But you likely already know this. You wanna know if Microsoft Copilot Studio is actually any good. Let's get into it. As a low-code developer and Power Platform user myself that has developed several different co-pilots for several different companies that do several different things, I have been able to mess around and learn and play with the different features within Copilot Studio. The first thing that I think is a huge plus of Microsoft Copilot Studio is kind of the authoring canvas, I'd call it. Or basically what your screen looks like when you're building the co-pilot, the little boxes with the arrows connecting them all. I think it has a lot of benefits and positives as well as it's pretty user friendly. It makes sense from a low code perspective or somebody with zero coding background. And if you wanna actually peek into the nitty gritty details of the code, you are able to do that, which is low key a game changer. I like it. Now, don't, don't get it confused here. I am by no means a Copilot Studio fanboy. And not to spoil anything, I definitely have some pretty big gripes as far as things that need to change. We'll get into that in a second. Another positive though is how easy it is to manage your Copilot's channels and knowledge sources. The channels are basically where your Copilot will exist. Depending on your authentication settings, this could be on a website within Microsoft Dynamics or anything else you see on this screen. And as a low-code consultant, this deployment of Copilot to channels can feel like the most technical and scary part, but I feel like this experience is actually pretty good. Also managing knowledge sources, I feel like is fairly straightforward. This is where you can add custom data sets, documents, web pages, all for the generative AI capabilities of your Copilot to use. Now, while I think it's easy to add them, I have a suggestion for Microsoft. Microsoft, if you're listening, add the ability to check access to website information. What do I mean? I mean that there can be some, any number of limitations on why Copilot is not able to read your website information. And if you try to add a website that explicitly doesn't meet this criteria, then it will prohibit you from creating it. But there are still a ton of different scenarios where you could add a web page as a knowledge source, it not give you any sort of issues, but Copilot still not be able to access the web page's content. Maybe this is because there's a firewall on the page. Maybe the actual content of the web page are stored in photos and not actually texts. I was on a project where we wanted to access web page information and it followed the documentation, but for whatever reason, Copilot was not able to access anything on there. It was able to access other web pages. This is not a Copilot problem. At this point in time, it doesn't show you any sort of error. It just doesn't produce a response and kind of leaves you wondering why. I guess I just think this would be a cool little add-on and would be super low code friendly. Now let's let's get into kind of some ratings here. How good actually is it? I want to give a rating for the current state of where Copilot Studio is at as well as kind of the future state and what we can expect because I think it's important to remember that at the time of producing this video, Copilot Studio is less than a year old. Copilot Studio today is maybe a five out of 10. I can't even begin to list you all of the different bugs and errors that I experienced when trying to develop Copilots. For starters, there really isn't a good way to migrate co-pilots between environments. So if you put it into a solution and deploy it, export, import, I've had it randomly disable certain settings that were pretty fundamental to the co-pilot working, causing us to make numerous updates to the co-pilot in the upper environment anyways. I mean, talk about mildly annoying. The error messages in Copilot Studio are also pretty bad, if they even tell you anything at all. After wanting to pull my hair out on many occasions, I find that if you are getting an error with like zero input or zero explanation, check the topic properties, like the settings of the topic inputs or the topics properties. If there's nothing in there, then check any variables that you've since removed, but Copilot for whatever reason still thinks they exist. Also, if you wanna to try to use adaptive cards in your Copilot messages, Good luck. The experience is pretty bad and that's assuming that it doesn't just 
clear the adaptive card content you put in there last. Like literally I would write an adaptive card, put the adaptive card content in there, click off the conversation node, click back on it and it be empty. Another, I'm by no means a PowerFX guru, but there are a ton of functions which I would want to use, but that aren't actually supported. And this idea of what can I do and what can I do being unknown just felt really tricky navigating. I should probably stop, but I, I need to tell you one more. You could expect that when you log on to develop your Copilot on Monday morning that it could look and operate differently than how you left it on Friday afternoon. Throughout the past few months, Microsoft has consistently pushed updates to Microsoft Copilot Studio, which you would think is a good thing, and it is. It is a new product, I totally understand that. But it's not good if it just completely breaks your Copilot. I had experiences where these updates legit broke the Copilot I was working on. It would cause it to kind of continuously repeat itself and all sorts of different things. A few days later, it would go back to normal because Microsoft would realize that they introduced a bug, but a couple days later, they re-pushed that update. And a couple days after that, they took it back again. I guess I just want you to know, the product itself of Microsoft Copilot Studio is constantly being worked on as you develop Copilots in it. So just just expect that and be upfront with customers or projects that you're working on that, hey, this could happen. So how can I end this video on a high note? Because I think the product is really cool. I will say I think Copilot Studio and Copilot in general for business has a really bright future. I guess I just needed to vent about my experience over the last few months. I really like the way topics are outlined in the experience you get while trying to build conversations. I love the ability to quickly see and add channels or where your co-pilot will live in the world. I think there are a ton of upsides and I am personally really excited to continue to learn how to build co-pilots. So even though I don't love it now, I think it's more than worth it to learn. Now, if you're still watching, it's probably because you're interested in learning how to develop a co-pilot in Microsoft Copilot Studio. You are gonna have to watch this video here though before you do, because I'm gonna cover some super important tips and go into some of the nuances that I introduced in more detail. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.